This is Radio Cairo and it's exactly 4 o'clock, time for World of Info. My name is Dr. Amr Abrouk, Dr. Mohammed is at the controls and today we have a great surprise for our dear listeners because we have the pleasure and honor to have with us His Excellency Ambassador Stéphane Romaté, the Ambassador of France in Cairo and talking of course about France, about winning the uh, the World Cup, yes this is, uh, you might expect that but today is going to be a special episode because His Excellency the Ambassador uh, has served in Jordan, in, uh, in Canada, in Senegal and in Australia as an ambassador ambassador with a, with a dig- master's degree in law and a national uh, school of uh, administration graduate, but yet he has a passion, and the, his passion is to music. We share this pas- passion together, not, all of, not me only, but all of Egyptians love music, and today will be a very special episode because we are going to talk about French music, French music, French classical music, through the eyes of the French ambassador in Cairo, talking about his favorites, which of course will attract your attention and make us have a glorious uh, afternoon in the hot weather of Cairo. Mm. Sir, it's a great pleasure and honor, and thank you very much for accepting the invitation and accepting to talk about French music. Thank you so much, uh, dear Amr, and uh, so well, uh, I'm so, so pleased to be back in this uh, studio, to mm-hmm. be back with you, to be back with our listeners, and uh, this afternoon we'll have a very special program, and I hope uh, the listeners would like, uh, will, will, will appreciate you know, the, the, the special musical program we mm-hmm. have uh, 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 prepared. <laughs> prepared for them. <laughs> well, it's a, it was a great surprise, His Excellency suggested, uh, I said to him, what type of uh, French music or composers, because French, France is, of course, as everyone knows, is rich with arts and it's rich with their its own composers the composers who have uh, really delivered uh, romanticism to the music they have uh, taken up or shaped up the classical music and the 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 great uh, uh, world of uh, people like Beethoven and the famous uh, three B's but yet it has produced and introduced the French touch which is full of romanticism and full of beauty. And today, we uh, it was a puzzle. How are we going to start? So he, uh, His Excellency the Ambassador has decided to choose for us. Mm-hmm. And we are going to sail in the restless world of music, <laughs> <laughs> but under the guidance of a, of a real uh, clever uh, captain of the sea, <laughs> of this sea. And we're going to talk about uh, contemporary musicians, composers who lived together in the 19th century and the early 20th century. All of them knew each other. Some of them were very good friends, some of them were just acquaintance, some of them were very weird. But the four composers of today are geniuses. And we'll start right away with Saint-Saëns. With Saint-Saëns, Aquarium, from yeah. the Carnival of the Animals. So why Saint-Saëns, sir? You know, first, uh, I just want to tell you one thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, each time you listen to French classical muni- music, mm-hmm. you immediately recognize that this is French music. Mm-hmm. This is that. This has nothing to see with uh, German music, <laughs> Russian music, <laughs> Italian music. Mm. There is a kind of special character, which mm. is very difficult to 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 define. Yes. You know the fact that this is a very neat music uh, mm. with so many nuances. It's it's very f- very very fresh mm. music, uh, and I've selected with you, uh, uh, Amr. Uh, a series of uh, pieces mm. of uh, composers, French composers, from the end of 19th century, beginning of 12th, uh, 20th century. I'm sure that all our listeners have already heard these pieces yes. of music. They had probably most, they, uh, yes, in, probably in they don't know that yes. they are, uh, you know, French composers. Ah, yes. And uh, so I hope this uh, broadcast, this program, will help our listeners first to appreciate more French uh, French music and second to have uh, maybe the opportunity mm. to, to dig on and probably to, 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 to listen to more French music. And Saint-Saëns especially was a very classical man. He was very impressed and fascin- fascinated by classical music and he stayed for 20 years as the main uh, conductor of Madeleine, 
the famous, uh, the official uh, cathedral of uh, the French government. Right? Uh, Saint Sans, uh, you know, uh, lived. Uh, he was born in uh, 1850, uh, and uh, he, he died uh, early twentieth uh, uh, century. Mm -hmm. He was a very important composer. He has a you know huge uh, repertoire, yes. repertoire mm -hmm. with a number of uh, opuses probably uh, more than uh, than 200, mm -hmm. many symphonies, mm -hmm. uh, and of course everybody knows the symphony no, no, number three for mm -hmm. organ, mm -hmm. uh, especially the last movement. Mm -hmm. uh, he wrote uh, many Samson concertos. Samson and Delilah, yes, the opera. Sa Samson and, De and Delilah, the opera, mm -hmm. the famous opera. Mm -hmm. He wrote also uh, many concertos, uh, concertos for piano, five of them. Especially number two was and beautiful. Number two and, beautiful. And, the, and the cello concertos. And the cello concertos, one. of mm -hmm. course. You know, I, I used to be a, a, a cellist myself, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, Playing uh, Saint Sans mm. and his two cello concerto mm. is a must for any any mm. cellist, uh, any cello player. And uh, he wrote a special piece of music, mm. and this is why I wanted uh, you know to, to start our program mm. with yes. this music. This is a, a piece which is called the Carnival of the Anim Animals. Yes. I love the idea. I mean, he, mm. of every animal he did something or a small e piece. Exactly. And what is absolutely fascinating, mm. this is the a kind of very realism, you know, mm. very realistic music. It looks exactly as if you're watching a cartoon movie and exactly. watching the animals passing in front of you in exactly. every section. Exactly, you know, the correspondence between the music and the, the movement of the animal, right? The movement, you know, the pace of the mm. animal, mm. Uh, the track of the animal, even the smell of the animal. Wow. <laughs> so <it's laughs> and, you know, this is a unique piece in, uh, in, in world classical music. Mm. Thanks to Saint Sans, and I think for uh, for our uh, uh, auditors, for our listeners, they have to discover uh, mm. Saint Sans if they don't know the Carnival of Animals, and this piece Aquarium, which is one of the most famous, mm. uh, I think uh, has to be listened again for those uh, uh, who already know, well, was to be discovered by those. So we are listening or watching the Aquarium from the Carnival of Animals, and I believe this would be uh, lovely. I believe. Wow, Saint-Sans Aquarium. Saint Saint-Sans Aquarium, 
Don't you feel in the aquarium? Yes, we want moving, to swim, uh, moving want to swim and, uh, and with swimming the, with the uh, with, with the, the with the with the fish. Yes. 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 So you know when when I, I mentioned the realism of this music, mm. you can feel it mm. by uh, listening to uh, to to aquarium, yes. and in this uh, carnival of uh, animals. There are, I, if I remember well, 14 different yes, species of yes. music. One bird, mm. one elephant, yes. uh, and one which is very famous, and I could have also uh, uh, brought it. This is the swan song, uh, which wow. is very, very well known. Mm. And so the majesty of uh, this, uh, this music, uh, the, the, the lively uh, content of this music, this absolute correspondence between uh, the music and the image of the animal. This makes this piece absolutely unique. And the lovely thing is, you know, is that uh, the the people who are producing this or selling these uh, CDs or are putting the pictures with the animals on exactly. the front of, exactly. the, of the cover exactly. because they mm. just want mm. to show the people that this is exactly music of the animals and, and you yeah. can feel it. And so it's a very popular mm. uh, piece of music. Saint-Sens has been uh, known uh, you know, worldwide mm. uh, through uh, the, the carnival of the, of mm. the animals. Uh, I hope the, the, the listeners uh, will have liked it. Yes, and uh, rediscovered it. And rediscovered it, yes. Uh, but Saint-Sens, you know, is a probably uh, the, the, the central master of uh, the renewal of uh, French music mm. at the end of uh, the 19th century. Mm. And we have to understand that at this period of time, the classical world, mm. the music, was completely uh, uh, dominated mm. by Wagner. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, Wagner and he was, a, he was a, a fan of Wagner, at least at the, beginning, Schumann, the beginning. At the yes. beginning. And then after... He started he, to have he, his romantic idea, romantic he, he, he was in a complete anti-Wagnerian mm. uh, uh, crusade, in mm. a way. He created what we call the, national, the French National Society of Music, mm. which was a, a movement of uh, you know young composers, young artists, in reaction to the domination of European music by Wagner. Mm. And so Saint-Saëns, with uh, all these uh, com uh, the, these uh, pieces of music, uh, decided to, to to compose by reaction to this uh, you know Wagnerian uh, atmosphere yes. of the of the of this period of time. Some co some critics used to say about Saint-Saëns that the 20 years of Madeleine has really delayed his progress because he, he was working uh, continuously as the conductor of the, of was the royal the, court, yes. He, and, he, he was uh, the organist. Organist. Uh, and he was the was, organist it of was, this uh, it was the church of, in Paris. It's mm. the main church of Paris, so he has to be always there and he has to play there and, and he, he has to be very classical. And so he, I think it, it really stopped his progress, and, right? And his, his passion remained all his life long, uh, mm. you know, organ music. Mm. Uh, I mentioned the symphony number no. yes. three, which yes. is very famous, mm -hmm. and uh, the the last movement is uh, you know accompanied by, uh, by by an organ. This is the unique piece in uh, you know uh, uh, classical music with a such a place for uh, for, uh, for 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 organ, and uh, and so in a way Saint Sens was a revolutionary mm. because he was really the god. Although he was attacked later on by saying to, to the people of the modern times at that time, mm. quote unquote, that he was more classical and he shouldn't have been that. Right? He invented a, a music which is a quite of a transitional one, yes. you know, from the Romantic time to the more uh, contemporary one. Mm. Uh, but he's certainly, uh, he has a huge responsibility in organizing this, uh, I would say, f typical French classical music with all these composers. He's, in a way, the godfather of the French music of that time. And, and he so his influence uh, uh, goes far beyond his own music, but he has also influenced so many uh, composers, and some of them will listen uh, Yes, on. because he worked just for five years as a teacher or the, as a professor in the... In the, in the uh, the French in the Paris uh, music uh, school, and yet two of his students became very great people. Faure and Raval were his students. So, exactly. so when we look at two great musicians, great composers who are standing the test of time, were just his students who were very he impressed were, with he his was, music. Uh, Saint was very influential. Uh? Yes, in spite of the fact that he's just ten years exactly. their senior, he's exactly. not. He's not. I mean, uh, very older than them. He was really uh, their, uh, their good friend. And uh, we, we will listen a bit of uh, Ravel music. Mm. Uh, and, and we can feel the touch of Saint-Saëns. And we can feel, uh, you know, the influence from, uh, from Saint-Saëns. So really, you know, for those uh, who pay interest to uh, classical music, uh, 
knowing a bit more about the influence of Saint-Saëns is a key element to comprehend uh, how the, uh, the the French music, but also the European music mm. at that time, uh, you know, has a, a debt to, mm. to, to, to Saint-Saëns. Really, he was uh, he was the big uh, uh, face, the big the big man mm. uh, of uh, I would say non-Wagnerian. European classical music of that nice time. sentence, non Wagnerian, mm. yes. He was very influential, Wagner. I mean, <laughs> definitely <laughs> larger than life. Mm. But we are going to another uh, composer that you have picked very eloquently and cleverly because he is representing the opposite of Saint-Saëns, a man who was living a chaotic life, mm. a man who was uh, a revolutionary from the day one till the last day of his life. And yet, in spite of all this chaotic life, he lived long enough to affect the whole arena, the whole cultural arena. He was not just a composer, he was a musician, a clever man, and at the same time a writer. So by Eric Salé, I mean, this is somebody you have to tell us about. Why is this person Eric, so characteristic? Eric Satie, uh, we will listen to a piece of music uh, composed by Satie, uh, which I'm sure our listeners will immediately recognize because mm. it's a very famous one, mm. the famous Gymnopédie. Mm. Uh, he's a strange man. Mm. He's a very difficult to classify mm. because he doesn't belong to any uh, known box of mm. uh, music. He's not a romantic, he's not a symbolist, he's not a, 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 a realistic. Mm. Uh, he has created, I would say, his own musical environment. Mm which is absolutely separate uh, from all the other uh, you know, schools of, uh, of music. Mm -hmm. Satie was a very or original man, mm -hmm. you know, living uh, alone yes. by himself, yes. uh, ignoring uh, the, the, the rest of the, uh, of, of the people, no friends, uh, no uh, love relations. Uh, he was only dedicated to, to, to his music. And no one visited his house, and you remember the, the treasure that was found in his house because they visited his room, they found two pianos on top of each other, mm. and the piano on top or the, had a, a wealth of everything, mm. music parts and music things and, ri and writing things. And he I didn't mean, compose uh, that, uh, that many pieces, yes. uh, uh, probably uh, 50 of them. Mm. Uh, most of them with very very strange names, mm -hmm. and he is known, you know, for having uh, uh, named his pieces of music uh, after very very uh, you know awkward uh, uh, names. For example, gymnopedia, which is mm -hmm. not something. Uh, gymnopedia is a, 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 a typical Greek mm -hmm. dance of the antiquity. Wow. <laughs> uh, uh, for example, the, 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 what we call the gnosian, mm -hmm. uh, very very smart pieces of uh, of piano. He has also uh, composed uh, a, a small piece of music which he has named Bureaucratic Sonatina. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and he has changed his name or profession from being a musician. He called himself Phonometrician. <laughs> He's someone who... Uh, who measures sound, <laughs> and this is really <laughs> man of but a man. But he's also quite typical to uh, uh, the French spirit uh, <laughs> culture mm. of uh, the years, you know, especially the twenties after the First World mm. War. You know, the, the, the Europe has been completely destroyed, mm. and Satie, uh, in in uh, in a way, represents this uh, uh, cultural movement after mm. uh, First World War, a movement of uh, uh, lonely people. Mm. Uh, despair people because of the of the of the, of the war and of the, the, the war. number of losses e exactly and, and devastation uh, the the fact that he he, he, he was uh, and his music uh, uh, is is a bit sad mm. music you know and I think this is the sadness of the of, of his time mm. and uh, his loneliness is certainly also the fact that uh, he lived all, all, all across the the, the 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 war with a, a kind of uh, bitterness bitterness uh, uh, and also. Uh, a feeling of guilty. Mm. What about? We don't know. But his his music, you know, is full of this uh, uh, atmosphere of sadness, uh, and also with a very very original uh, uh, writing of music. Yes. And, and he was a writer. I mean, he has written a lot of pieces and articles in Vanity Fair and things like that. This is and makes him a, a very a real avant-garde person, right? Avant-garde. Mm. He, he he was uh, close to symbolist po mm. uh, po uh, po poetry. You know, mm. he wrote also uh, poems. Mm. Uh, so very unclassified composer, very original, living a bit in the margin of the society, yes. but 
today Satie uh, has a legacy and his music uh, is mm. his legacy and everybody knows some of these pieces and I'm sure that many of our friends listening to, 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 to us uh, this afternoon will recognize this uh, Gymnopedia, the number one mm. we have selected together, mm. the Amr, he has written three mm. and this one is uh, probably the most, uh, the most uh, famous. Mm. Very simple music, so simple. Uh, that it is very complicated. <laughs> but I can Definitely. tell you because I'm I'm trying to play it myself mm. Mm. and I'm learning it now uh, with my, my piano teacher and it's it seems to be so simple but it's so complicated. So Gymnopedia by Eric Satie. Listen and try to elaborate a great man, a chaotic man, but definitely a genius and an intelligent, super intelligent man. Let's listen in. This is a lovely piece. This is a beautiful piece, and uh, you can uh, feel the clarity of this music, mm. um, the simplicity of this music, but you can also uh, see how 
complex this is uh, Compose, behind yes. behind yes. you know the, uh, the 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 bottom mm -hmm. of this uh, of this music mm -hmm. the uh, the complexity of uh, of the chords mm. uh, but this is absolutely a beautiful uh, piece of piano and uh, something you can't find in any other uh, composers in any other uh, music this is purely french i wouldn't say why mm. probably because of uh, uh, the unique uh, simplicity, this uh, uh, mixture, this combination of uh, of clarity and simplicity, which I think are the two main characters of uh, the typical uh, classical French music, and you you find those characters uh, with uh, with Satie undoubtedly, mm. and also you know listening to this music, you feel the sadness. Mm. There is a kind of gravity mm -hmm. in this music. Uh, it's not uh, uh, a, a piece of joy. Uh, it's it has it's very melancholic mm. appearance, and I mean it, it. It can really fit to my mind as if somebody is walking in the streets of Paris, a, a, a very lonely man walking in the streets of Paris. This would be the type of music in a in a dark uh, sunset uh, this, ambiance. Yes, this is walking a, through a very beautiful street like Champs Elysees, but you are feeling the loneliness. Don't you think so? I mean, I, I, I can feel that. And this is a, a, an early uh, uh, composition mm. by, by Satie. He was young. He was in his twenties when he mm. composed that. He composed uh, the Gymnopédias in uh, eight, 1888. Mm -hmm. You know, so twenty-two were, years. He mm. was uh, yes in the early thirties. Uh, uh, that that was quite uh, you know 20 20 years uh, before before the first world war mm. uh, there was a there was a very very happy time for for france at this uh, mm. moment a period of creation of uh, artistic uh, uh, effusion uh, but you feel you know the the, the sadness of uh, of seti mm. and this is why he's absolutely uh, uh, you can't put him in a, in other boxes he's absolutely a, a lonely man in the uh, in the in the classical music of that time mm. and this is why he deserves to be better known yes and so from seti we go to another contemporary of his another man who really has affected the the world of music uh, gabriel Fauré. Ah, Gabriel Fauré. Yes, an organist in Madeleine, so he has the same career like Sansons, a student of Sansons. And yes. he studied mm. under his hand, although there is only 10 years difference, but they became great and good friends all through their lives. And they lived together, I mean, in the same period of time, and then died almost near each other in the same period of time. He died in 1924. Exactly. But uh, he was mm. the missing link between Romanticism and Modernism. What do you think of that? Uh, I think uh, Fauré is a, a, a composer uh, who deserves to be better known. Mm -hmm. Even if he, were, if he was, uh, you know, an, a compulsive composer, especially he composed so many melodies, mm -hmm. probably more than uh, 200 of them. Uh, and, you know, putting in music uh, great uh, uh, poems from, from uh, uh, French uh, uh, poets. Mm -hmm. So he's known uh, in the French culture as being the composer of the big, uh, you know, uh, uh, post-romantic mm. poets of that mm. uh, period of, of time. Uh, what I like in uh, Fauré's music is the intimacy of mm. this music. You know, this is uh, uh, something uh, for yourself, a music, a music for your heart. Uh, this is not uh, a music. Uh, this is chamber music. Most mm -hmm. of uh, of uh, of his pieces are chamber music, or even sonatas, mm -hmm. uh, piano and and cello. Mo many of them, uh, and and, and Fauré created this uh, special atmosphere, very intimist. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was uh, also, you know, same kind of school than uh, than Saint Sans, and you mentioned mm. uh, truly the fact that uh, Saint Sans was a, a kind of god godfather for him. Also, very anti uh, German music, mm -hmm. and his musical language is so different to the uh, German musical uh, language, anti Wagner also. Mm. Uh, but uh, Fauré matters very much in uh, in our musical history because of this very intimist you mm. know way he composes uh, his, uh, his music 
And what we are going to listen to, you know, the Elegy mm -hmm. is a very famous. It's a piece for a cello and, and piano. Uh, it's one of the most uh, renowned uh, uh, for a composition. Uh, there are several others. Uh, he, wrote, he, he wrote also uh, a piece which, which is very famous, which is a kind of uh, uh, funeral song mm -hmm. for uh, 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 a deceased infant, which is very, 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 very famous. So there is also like Satie, like also in a way Saint-Saëns, a very uh, a bit of, of, of sadness. Sadness and bitterness. Yeah. Uh, do you think this is attributed to the same ailment that Beethoven had? I mean, the last 20 years of his life, he was having progressive deafness until he really became deaf in the end. So some music critics say that his turbulent music is related to his personal tragedy. A musician, a composer, mm. a great man, and he's losing his his uh, his, uh, ear, his ears, his listening capabilities. So, uh, Forêt, Forêt uh, lived a quite uh, long life. Yes. You know, he was a uh, mm. he was a quite wealthy uh, composer. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was not obliged to compose only to 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 to, to sustain his uh, his way the, of living. They yeah. say that he was quite well he, off. So that's uh, why he didn't compose much. I mean, in the end of the day, he, he was he composed uh, many many melodies. Yes, you know, he was very concerned. He didn't do a lot of. Uh, of uh, symphonies, I didn't do any symphonies because he was very busy with Madeleine. Right? And you know what? Uh, something uh, similar to to Saint Saëns and to many other uh, French composers mm. of that time, uh, Fauré was uh, an organist mm. too. And uh, this is not uh, at random. Uh, organ music mm. uh, was very very important during this period of time because of the revival of uh, Catholic faith, mm. uh, because uh, many uh, uh, churches constructions, uh, including the construction of organs, mm. and so many many composers you know came to music composition through their uh, organ uh, uh, their organ music, mm. and uh, Fauré is uh, very much representative of this period of time, mm -hmm. and. The elegy we are going to to to, to listen to is uh, uh, it's a purely for for a music. Once again, you will never listen this uh, uh, comparable piece of music in a, any other uh, music. For example, with the Italians, with the Russians, or with the Germans, it's mm. purely French end of uh, 19th century classical music. So more about Fauré with His Excellency Ambassador of France, Stéphane Romaté. Really, it's a a uh, really lovely afternoon in Cairo. So, uh, Elegier by Fauré.
Wow. Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you need a bit of silence uh, yes. after such uh, such a piece. You you can feel the uh, the melancholia, mm. which is uh, you know at the very heart of the the, the, the composition, and of course the uh, this tempo, very very slow tempo, lento lento mm. tempo. Uh, uh, is the, the character of this uh, piece of music very very sad and a lot of gravity at the beginning of uh, of this uh, this piece and then is becoming uh, you know r quicker and quicker the middle part is uh, technically uh, very very difficult for you're a cellist yourself you're saying I used to be I yes. used to be and it was very difficult for you to play the special middle part. The, right? This the 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 beginning uh, oh, is, okay. is quite okay. <laughs> so you feel uh, at ease, you know, and uh, you feel uh, very much uh, you confident, know, uh, com confident in yourself. And then when <laughs> you reach, uh, you know, the middle part, then uh, you know the the difficulties begin. And I never succeeded in going through uh, through the LAG, uh, despite you're hours and hours of You're <laughs> very <laughs> modest. Yeah. Stefan, you're very modest. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope that our listeners uh, have appreciated mm. uh, this uh, this uh, um, LAG, uh, very, very characteristic of uh, Forest music. And what I like, you know, this is uh, uh, this melancholia. Uh, yeah. And... Uh, uh, this 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 special mood of uh, a, a bit of uh, of yes of sadness once mm. again of bitterness, uh, mm. uh, which is the character of uh, the composers of this period of time. Yes, yes. So we'll we'll have to leave uh, Fauré and go to somebody who has really was a clever man, a man who lived from 1875 till 1937 has witnessed the the progress of technology where music can be recorded and he was very much into technology and he started recording his work from the day one from 1920s the first of any recording he was there and he has piano scores and orche uh, where he'd start first with a piano score and then change it into a, an orchestra orchestration of this work a man with uh, uh, scarce work never did uh, anything for the music of the church and yet a man who is living here among us and one of the most popular French musicians composers Ravel Maurice Ravel, Ravel yes. Maurice Ravel and uh, of course Maurice Ravel is known uh, through his bolero yes. his bolero is probably one of the most played classical <laughs> It's okay? Yes, of course. Uh, Bolero is probably one of the most played uh, piece of uh, classical music in the, in the mm. world. Mm. You know, you, and everybody knows about the, the Bolero, about mm. the, the, this very, very special piece of music. Maybe, maybe uh, it would be better to, to listen to it mm. and then after to come back uh, to the composition of this uh, piece of music. Uh, but Maurice Ravel, uh, as you mentioned, is a very special uh, composer. Mm. Uh, he started uh, his composition time before First World War, and he ended uh, his, uh, his composition time. He, d he died in uh, 1937, yes. just some, some, some two years before the start of the Second World War. Mm. And he was very much affected and also inspired in a way by uh, by, by the wars and by the tensions mm. in Europe at that, that time can you imagine that uh, not only is known for for the bolero which mm. is a uh, is a epitom ep ep i can't remember the name in english but uh, you know in uh, his, his most famous uh, piece but he also composed uh, just after the second uh, the first world war uh, what we call the concerto for piano for left hand. Mm. He dedicated his uh, piano for one, his concert, concerto uh, for left hand to one of his best friends uh, who lost his, uh, who, who was a pianist and who lost at war his, uh, white, his uh, right hand. Wow. And so he composed a, a, a very, very famous concerto only with, for the left hand. 
and so this is something which is of course uh, unique in the mm. in the in the in the, in the European music you know, and and Ravel did it you know and uh, and uh, you you don't have even listening to to it the impression that it's it's a single handed played mm. you know it's so so the 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 the, the width of uh, of the repertoire for this concerto uh, is, uh, is 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 so incredible that you have the impression that the, the pianist is playing with the two hands but not at all it's only left hand composed uh, cello concerto and his friend uh, piano uh, concerto, and his sorry. friend did play it right and he's a friend uh, the pianist the, the pianist uh, which is the, the who is the the, the one know, who dedicated the, this to him played played played, play, play, played, played. this uh, the, just after second uh, first world war yes oh. and so ravel uh, uh, is uh, probably one of the most famous french composers thanks to the bolero but also he was very influenced and we'll see that in the bolero by you know the music of his time music from spain mm. jazz music Mm. And uh, the bolero is uh, uh, both influenced by the, the sounds of uh, Spain, and bolero is a Spanish dance, and also very jazzy uh, music uh, mm. in, in a way. And so Ravel is uh, a bit uh, uh, very, very special uh, in the French, uh, you know, uh, uh, classical music because of uh, this uh, uh, influence of uh, of more modern music as uh, jazz was at uh, this mm. uh, this period of time. Uh, one word uh, again on, uh, on on Ravel. It's very original music, mm -hmm. very easily recognizable. When you yes. listen to a piece of music uh, from Ravel, you immediately recognize Ravel. It's not uh, you know comparable to any other composer. Uh, he's known for very famous uh, uh, pieces, uh, for example, uh, Daphne and Chloe, uh, mm -hmm. who is a, which is a famous uh, uh, symphonic uh, uh, poem. Is known also for uh, uh, a, a D major piano concerto, which we all know. Uh, we don't have time, of mm. course. But you air. definitely said you have promised to come. Uh, of course, <laughs> of course. And so uh, Ravel, frankly, uh, uh, was a very, very influential composer. And I would say, in a way, he's the best representatives, re the best representative of French music from uh, first to Second World War, you mm. know, this period of time of the 20s and the 30s. Mm. He was a difficult man, you know, with a, a, a very hectic character. Mm. Uh, again. <laughs> again. Uh, probably, you know, to create, you know, to you need to be, uh, to have a, a strong character. Uh, he was uh, living uh, completely alone in a again, remote... Uh, so like city. Like city, in a remote uh, 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 small village in the uh, outskirts of, uh, of Paris. Uh, refusing to see anybody, you know, mm. composing uh, in silence by himself in his uh, smaller uh, house. That's why he started always the piano piano score, and then he later changed it into a, uh, a symphony one, right? And uh, he's uh, not not only composing on his piano, but he's also arranging, you know, for mm. orchestra his mm. own uh, his own uh, piano composition. Mm. And uh, and of course the bolero we are going to to, to listen to uh, is a so 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 famous uh, piece of music. Unfortunately, because it's a quite a long piece of music, mm. you know, 15 minutes, we don't so have we'll time. So five minutes of it because we want to talk about somebody who's dear to both of us. Of course, yes. of course. Mm. But we'll keep this as a mm. surprise for our listeners. I'll we'll definitely have to listen to Bolero by Raval. Right.
Your Excellency, you have a secret to tell us about this piece in particular, because this is a two one sentence piece one, of music. One sentence divided in two parts mm. and which is repeated, you know endlessly. Endlessly until of course the final uh, climax. Climax. Kind of final explosion. So it's almost thirty to forty times that he's repeating this sentence. This is uh, this we of course uh, only listen uh, listen uh, listen to 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 one portion of the the bolero. The the whole bolero is about fifteen minutes. Mm. Uh, some some uh, conductors uh, play play it uh, quicker than fifteen minutes, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think it has to be played too quickly. So mm. uh, you know, fifteen minutes is the good. Uh, tempo for it, and what is very strange in the in the the, the, the bolero, and which creates this uh, special atmosphere. Of course, you feel the mm. Spanish influence, mm. yes, and you feel the jazzic, you know, uh, uh, content of this mm. uh, of this music. So you have one sentence which is uh, repeated uh, thirty to, to to forty times, and for each sentence. You have the addition of one more instrument mm. till the uh, final explosion. Till the final explosion, during which all the orchestra is playing the bolero, mm. and uh, this is of course a, a fascinating uh, creation. You know, uh, the tempo, uh, the rhythm of uh, of the, the 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 music is constant all along uh, its mm. duration. Uh, but what makes the difference? Is is the sentence after sentence the introduction introduction in the game in the play of new instruments, and at the end all the orchestra is playing until the the the, the very final uh, uh, climax, uh, very final explosion, and so uh, this is beautiful, yes. uh, this is unique, uh, this is uh, so so well known everybody knows the the bolero, and I think uh, Ravel now. Uh, uh, is known for for the eternity of course but we have to leave Ravel in eternity to talk about some person who is dear to everyone in Egypt mm. everybody in Egypt likes this man maybe they don't even know his name but they really recognize this piece of music that he has played a man who was born in 1838 died prematurely in 1875 with a broken heart because he was a very talented composer. He tried his best to convince the people with his music. And every time he writes a piece of music, people and critics just come to him and say, you're awful. We hate your, we despise your music, we hate your music. Until he finally made one opera, which he thought will be, might be received good from the people. And it was received very badly. Mm. This poor gentleman had a heart attack and died three months after the first production of his beautiful opera. And then he became the most famous opera played all over the world. And this man is quite rem remembered as the man who, if he has lived, he would have been the greatest music uh, challenge and the great music composer in the whole world. And by this I mean... Georges Bizet. Yes. Georges Bizet, the composer of Carmen. Carmen. Yes. Carmen the most played opera in the world wow. and i'm sure that it has been been played played often here in cairo yes certainly and, and certainly. everybody knows the overture because we're of going course, to we're going course. to finish our program with the overture mm. with a special request from you because to, to you of course mm. to talk about it because this man deserves this uh, piece of information to our listeners a man who died with a broken heart about the great success you know, uh, what is strange in uh, Bizet life, this is the fact that he's today probably the most renowned opera composer <laughs> in the world, because mm. everybody knows Carmen, and Carmen has been played, you know, hundreds and hundreds of times in the world, and is still, you know, uh, produced mm. in so many opera houses. And in different languages. In <laughs> different languages, uh, with uh, so many productions. But what is uh, strange, this that is the fact that during his life uh, this man was completely rejected yes. because his music was uh, seen as a absolute nonsense mm. and so he was completely ignored by uh, his uh, fellow citizens rejected uh, left apart left alone but he and died left, with a broken heart he left to the humanity this treasure which is Carmen mm. Sir, it's been great having you in this beautiful afternoon in Cairo. You made the hot weather with a very beautiful, cold breeze.
of uh, French music coming from across the Mediterranean. With beautiful pieces of music, you have helped us to enlighten our listeners and enlighten myself with pieces of information about people. I always say that music is not just the music that we listen in, but the people who has written this music, the people who lived with this music, and most important of all, the people who have been impressed and their lives changed when they listen to this music. Sir, it's a great pleasure to have with us today, to our dear listeners, uh, His Excellency Stéphane Romaté, Ambassador of France in Egypt. Congratulations for the Thank World you. Cup. <laughs> <laughs> You're number one or number 16, but no hard feelings. <laughs> 69 is but number one. So today, okay. that was a, another story. That was yes, a story, of, story uh, of world champions in classical music. Classical music. And I, I hope, I'm sure that our listeners had a good time of listening course. to those pieces. And we leave you and with Carmen, but not with a broken heart, but with great impression of a great man and thank you so much for your kind welcoming this afternoon dear it's, it's a great pleasure and very kind of you thank you very much my name is Amr Mabrook and I'm Hamad at the control I leave you with Carmen till next week <laughs>